we've been recreational users of uh, Porcupine Hill Livingston ever since um, I can remember, which is probably two or three years of age. Uh, and we've been uh, fishing and, and walking that country uh, all those years. I have traveled in that <coughs> country for, for over 70 years. The first time I went into Daisy Creek was on horseback with my father and a friend of his. And I, I can sit and imagine different holes on the river that I've fished, caught fish, or been skunked. So I know the country very, very familiarly. Uh, it's always been a, a, a rite of spring and summer that we, we go in fishing and we've been <clears throat> walking those rivers and fishing those rivers all our lives. There's scenes there that are, that are locked in your memory and memories sitting around campfires that you'll, you will be in your mind forever. From the time that, uh, that I started fishing there, uh, change, the changes have been dramatic. And it really has to do with, with uh, the amount of people, the pressure on the areas. It's, uh, it's the random camping that, uh, again, I can recall there was some when we started, now there's a lot more. Uh, and, and people seem to stay all summer, some groups of them, which uh, you used to walk, when you walk the creeks, they're quiet. You see a lot of game. Now you walk the creeks and, and you see a lot of, of uh, off-road vehicles and they scare all the game away. You don't see much in the way of game anymore. You're, you're listening to trail bikes racing up and down the creeks and quads wandering all over. I don't know how many times the last few years I've gone up on a beautiful day, it's been fishing, and then I'll, I'll hear or I'll see uh, uh, vehicles going through the creek and, and you know a month after the spawn, here comes all the silt coming down again and you know, just covering over the spawn. And, and that's happened, I've seen it on the racehorse, I've seen it on the old man, uh, <clears throat> that happens way too often. There should be uh, established trails. And there has to be enforcement. There has to be people making sure that people aren't wandering around. Unless you protect those headwaters, you don't know what's gonna happen. The, the, those rivers, those streams, feed a lot of part of Alberta. They, they feed the whole agriculture industry in southern Alberta. And it, goes on to that and eventually all that water winds up in Diefenbaker Lake. All this, all this stuff has a big impact right across the prairies. Land use planning means better management and it, mean, it means mitigating the impacts of what's going on in there and uh, uh, trying to maintain uh, the, the very fragile ecosystems that you have. Science-based planning is, 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 <laughs> is the way it's done. It's the proper way to do it. And, uh, and there's no reason for, for a place like Alberta to fall behind what the rest, the rest of the world does. It's, it's, a, it's a standard and it, and it should go forward. Unless you manage this appropriately, uh, and, and, and trout are, are they're like the canary in the coal mine. Eh? They're very sensitive uh, uh, species. So in the future, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, there are still trout and you can still fish for trout then the ecosystems are surviving, they're, 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 they're being properly managed. Many, many areas have lost that. Many, many areas have lost their fisheries. That would just be unconscionable to do on, on, the, on these slopes of the Rockies.